made it very clear to think. I know I didn't. I didn't think it made any damn sense. Like to me, and, and you know, and that's even if it was my husband telling me that. Like, first of all, she didn't even know. Even when he came back, he didn't even tell her he was in Tampa. She didn't know where he had been. Like she just right. knew he was on for three days. Like to me, it shouldn't have took taken all of this for him to tell her where he had been you know what i mean and it's just like to say oh i was just going to the beach like you passed other beaches like you just drove like what shit well what happened to destin where about jacksonville like i mean how you come to tampa you know so i was just like this this story isn't adding up to me and honestly it was like i did ask more questions it's so funny like when i watch the stuff back like they edit so many things out like i was asking them like so you ain't never had nobody you used to work with that live in tampa you ain't got no friends that live in tampa nobody you know live in tampa you just up and just landed in tampa like it just it just didn't make sense to me i don't know it wasn't the flu for me but what I will say is I love them together as a couple. So it's not like I'm saying, oh, she needs to break up with him or anything like that. But I'm just saying it ain't make no sense. Right. I got it. And the thing is, the, one of the things about you is you kind of do wear your, uh, what you're yeah, thinking on your face. <laughs> I be making facial expressions and I don't even know that I'm doing it. So even when I'm watching the show back, I was like, oh God, why was I doing that? Like, I don't even know that I, half the time I, I didn't even realize that I did make those faces. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Um, let me ask you this, because we just talked about um uh Drew and her husband, and then you know, you're really good friends with Kenya, and Kenya has, you know, issues in her marriage. At what point, you know, you're a woman, you're grown, you're married, you have friends that are in relationships and are married. When do you, as a, you know, as a friend, when do you say to them, like, I think you should leave? Because you said you were pretty vocal with Kenya saying, look, I think, you know, how, when do you make that choice as a friend to say, look, I'm going to tell you, I feel like you should go. I feel like she should move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I just feel like the effort wasn't the same and wanting to mend the relationship. Like, um, first of all, I've spent time with her and Mark outside of what y'all seen on the show. So I have time with Mark and I do like Mark. You know, I think he's a cool guy, but I just feel like in their relationship, he hasn't been the best as far as giving her the affection or the love that she needs in return. And right. Kate totally different in her relationships than she is with us as a group like the way she is with the girls is not how she is in her relationship and I just felt like you know she was holding out for a long time hoping that he would put in effort to try to like work things out or whatever and I just didn't feel like it was being reciprocated and I'm just like okay well how long are you gonna wait and I get it she wants the ideal marriage yeah. and and all of that but sometimes it just doesn't come the way that you imagined it to be you yeah. know um and you know you just gotta be happy move on okay got it um i know that you're also friends with latoya and when you guys were filming i saw that i think you went on a double date with her and her husband at the time you and todd and her, her, her husband at the time and now they're not together mm -hmm. were you guys i know you said you were friends with latoya were you guys like you were friends with her husband too? Were you like a double day kind of crew or? No, um, I had met, actually I had met Latoya through Ming Lee. When, when Latoya oh. came to Atlanta, Ming had um, introduced me to her. And so we had hung out or whatever. And so that's how I became cool with Latoya. And so, you know, she got, they got kids um, similar to the similar ages of, you know, Ace and, you know, so they had came to like, you know, Ace's birthday parties and stuff like that. So, you know, we was cool, but then I had introduced them to the casting people for Housewives the year prior when, before their relationship fell apart. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, you know, it didn't work out. And so the following year they came back around to talk to them, but then they started having issues in their marriage and he didn't want to be a part of the show no more. Right. So, um, you know, we had all went out, you know, so that you know we could talk about it and maybe you know he could have you know ask you know talk to todd and maybe from a male's point of view see you know how he would feel or whatever right. dealing with the situation but 
clearly he still wasn't feeling it. But him and Todd are friends. They still cool and still hang out. I see you. I see on Instagram. Yeah, they still cool. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I hate that relationship didn't work out because I think he is a really, a really cool dude. He's a really good guy. And I hate that they having the issues that they having, but, you know. Do you think, I mean, we didn't really get to see him on the show, so I don't even know if this is a fair question, but you know how they always say, once you bring your relationship on TV, you know, it kind of gets cursed sometimes. Well, they started having problems before she even got on the show, so. Okay, so that ain't it. All right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, but you did talk to her about their issues on your Speak On It. Mm -hmm. um, were you surprised at all at what went down? You already kind of knew ahead of time what was, what you know, what you read and stuff like that. Well, she had already been telling me about what was going on in the relationship. And she actually had been talking about it all throughout the taping. Because like I said before, they were actually looking at her as potentially being a possible housewife. But because, um, you know, he wouldn't sign off on the kids being on the show and stuff like that, um, they end up not allowing her to be a housewife. So you never got any of her personal stories. Right. You know, she shared. She's a sharer. Okay, she would tell you all her business. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, um, so yeah, I knew pretty much everything that was going on in their situation from her point of view. Okay, okay, and, got it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Um, switching gears here, I recently read, I think it's like last week, that you said that you are not sure where you and Portia stand, and I guess, uh, where, where your relationship or your friendship stands. And I'm assuming that comes from the lie that she did where she admitted for that she asked for an episode to be removed from the show. She did a lie. So I'm guessing that's where, that's where that may have came from. You could correct me all wrong, but is, mm -hmm. is it from that or was it another issue that we didn't get to see or? <laughs> well, it, it's like uh, different things would happen. Um, it's like every time something happened, like I don't really be knowing what's going to go on. So like, say for instance, um, you know, everything will be cool. And then, like, the episode that aired when I said, um, I guess when, um, oh, yeah, when I said to Don Juan, um, well, I wouldn't say that King is lying. Um, right after that, she opted out of the group text that all of the housewives were on. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I guess she ain't talking to us no more. <laughs> right. So at that point, I hadn't talked to her um, at all up until we got to the reunion. But she seemed cool at the reunion. So I was like, OK, I guess we don't have an issue or whatever. And then, um, you know, it was the article in the magazine that talked about the um, scene that was deleted or whatever. And then she did the speak on it that wasn't on speak on it. <laughs> I was like, why you got to do a speak on it but won't come on speak on it? I right. understand. Right, right, right. But, um, yeah, I, I that was interesting because, um, which I will, I did speak about that on the speak on it that I, I had to do a two part, two part speak on it because I never really addressed what she said in her, um, her speak on it on her live. Because, um, actually, when she did that, I was, um, last week I was in Chicago, I had to do a big scene for that I was filming for the shy, and I then I, our movie was releasing for envy so i didn't want me speaking about what she had said on her live to over you know be become bigger than me promoting the movie that i had coming out last week so that's why i didn't really too much talk about what she had said on okay. her live whatever. but yeah okay. um, clearly she you know i didn't know where we stood after she did her live i didn't know i was just like i don't know do you but know where you guys stand now I mean, I guess, I don't know. I guess, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we okay. I mean, um, like she, she definitely showed love and, um, posted about the movie that, you know, I was in last week or whatever. And, um, when I finally did get to see her live, it wasn't like she said anything too crazy about me or whatever. So, right. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't, I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't okay. know. No, well, I, I, I like, we are always in a weird space and we will forever be because, you know, the things that have happened with us has gone so far. I don't know if it's ever going to be like, oh, we besties, right. you know what I'm saying? But we have this, we are part of a show that will always keep us tied. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. 
fair enough. Um, let's talk about Bolo. Um, <laughs> did you realize that this bachelorette party would be like such a huge storyline this season? Did you have any idea Go that? No. Okay. Going into it, I was just trying to make sure it was a lit party because here's the thing. Um, you know, the whole situation with the uh, dungeon situation, you know, it came from a negative situation in the past. But from that, you know, I made the dungeon tour and, you know, it, you know, it has gone on to become its own thing and it's fun. But, um, when Kenya put me in charge of doing the party for Cynthia, I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to be in charge of the party, I'm going to make sure that thing is lit. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be lit. And anytime I throw a party, people going to know they need to be there, you know? So that was all I was concerned with, making sure that it was fun and that people know next time I bring the dungeon tour out, you need to be there. And that was it. That's all I was concerned about going into it. So clearly, um, you know, when when we the party happened, you know, everybody was having fun, you know, and and then you know the producers left, and everybody still wanted to have fun or whatever. You know, I just, I, I didn't know it's kind of. I didn't know it was gonna be super fun. <laughs> oh, shit, I don't know. But hey, and then I definitely didn't know that it was going to be um, discussed the next day. Okay. Or, I mean, clearly, you know, we talk amongst ourselves off camera, but right. I didn't know it was gonna be discussed on camera the next day. Okay. Um, Not the after party part. Right, the after party part. Well, you know what I found interesting? I feel, I feel like you do a good kind of job of like not being involved involved because I'm like where is where's candy like I really didn't you weren't really in the in the mess mess you know what I'm saying and for pe people to look at candy like the candies is freak she's open about her sexuality this is her party I'm like where is candy like you stay out of it well okay so here is it was a catch-22 situation right um Okay, so you know, on the on the one hand, okay, here here it is. I'm a I'm a person who owns my sexuality. You know, it's clear. I do not give a damn what nobody thinks. You know about you know about what I do sexually or how I feel or what I like or what I dislike or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's just who I am. Um, I've always been that way. You know, I'm just who I am. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, I have a sex toy line. So, clearly, I promote sex positivity. Yes. <laughs> I mean? Yes, you do. So, with that being said, I just felt like it. And on top of that, I'm the one who brought Bolo to the um, South Carolina. So, I just didn't think it would make sense if I'm telling people, to have fun and live your best life for me to crucify them, you right. know? So regardless of whatever our past has been or whatever, it just didn't make sense in my mind for me to be the one to be trying to crucify somebody for whatever their decisions are. Right. So that's just how I was looking at it. And regardless of, you know, I, you know, people were like, it, it, it was like, I was stuck in this weird situation. It was like on one side, you know, it's like people who are Porsche fans will be like, Oh, you know, you don't, you know, you, you, you know, not having Porsches back or whatever, whatever. And then it would be like people who Kenya's fans are like, Oh, you're Kenya's friend. You're not having Kenya's back, and it's right. just like, well, Kenya is my friend, and I you know I love her dearly, you know. But it's just like a weird situation to be in, you know. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, and I want to ask you about Kenya in terms of the situation. But where, where is Tanya? <laughs> like, what she like just disappeared? Like, Tanya. have you spoke to her? Have you seen her? Dang on. Oh. Her relationship is intact. She was like, I ain't got time to be messing with y'all. Y'all mess my dang on life up. <laughs> hey, she was like, uh, I got to go tend to my fiance. Let me uh, <laughs> get that right. right. Um, 
Yeah, we never saw her after South Carolina. That was a wrap. After she South just disappeared. We did not see her. Have you spoken to her since? I'm sorry. Yeah, can you hear me? I'm sorry. I went on pause. I'm sorry. Okay. Have you spoken to Tanya since? Since I know she just we, she you guys didn't film with her, but have you spoken to her since? No, I have not. Um, it was one time she hit me. Um, she was I guess she's filming a project and um that she's working with um entrepreneurs or something, and she had stopped by um one of my at my store or something like that and she just hit me in the dm and was like hey i stopped by your store today and that was it other than that um we came out of the way yeah she ain't talking to me okay <laughs> <laughs> um let's let's talk about kenya and the bolo situation i think andy calling called her a dick detective tonight i mean or a <laughs> dick detective or something like that um she was she was you know very vocal about accusing portia of hooking up with Bolo and she uh -huh. really wanted Portia to, you know, admit what she had allegedly did. Why do you think um, that was such a big issue for, for Kenya with this Portia and Bolo thing? Oh, well, I mean, it was clear that the reason why, well, first of all, she just felt like if it had been her, that everybody would have crucified her. Mm -hmm. like that Like, she felt like that was, that was the main thing. She was like, if it had been her, they would have roasted her. You okay. know? And, and and truth be told, they would have, you know, okay. and like, like, stop playing. Like, and then on top of that, you know, she feels like, you know, we're in the house as our job. Like, this show, this is our job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and if we don't talk about what's happening in the house, then you don't have a show. Right. So in her mind, it's like she's doing her job. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in a sense. I understand it from that perspective because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, realistically, if she didn't talk about it, then what would we have been talking about for the most part? Right. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know, the uncomfortable conversations are what make the show the show. Like none of us want to have, uncomfortable conversations we don't want to have uncomfortable com conversations about nothing about our relationships about our kids about nothing right like anything that make us look bad it, it, everybody want to stop talking about it. they don't want to talk about nothing that makes them look bad right everything that makes them look bad they don't want it to be seen period or talked about right so it's just like it's nothing you you can't go you really can't go right in any scenario regardless of whatever it is if you bring up something that makes somebody look bad on the show right okay i understand well and you made a conscious decision or did you i mean kenya really wanted you to kind of say what you knew um it wasn't even just kenya and you'll see it even marlo was starting trying to like i guess when marlo started having her issues with um Portia, it was like even she started trying to like force me into you know into a situation where it's like they wanted to force me to talk about it and my thing is like talk about what y'all know why y'all keep trying to force me to talk about it like they clearly said they would and they said on the tv that they heard something what talk about what you heard why right. you keep trying to force me <laughs> like, leave me alone yeah you were you were clear in like trying to stay out of it um oh that's hilarious okay so moving on let's talk about toya and drew um how do you feel they did in terms of like adjusting with the cast just you know as being newbies basically oh my god i thought they did a great job as newbies i mean y'all gotta think a lot of times when new people come on the show it's hard for them to just jump right in and start you know having conversations or you know going back and forth a lot of people are intimidated some people you know hold back or whatever those girls did not hold back right up from day one they were just like acting like they've been there you know <laughs> so i love them both for that um i felt like um uh, drew i love because she shared a lot of her personal life and yeah. that's not easy to do um you know everything from the stuff that was going on her marriage and the stuff that was happening with her kid's father yeah. i 
I commend her for that because that's not easy, you know? Yeah. I mean? And, um, yeah, so I love that. And um, Latoya, man, she was reading every day. <laughs> every day she was reading somebody on that show. And I don't know, people were saying they didn't like her or whatever, but she trended every Sunday night. She did, yeah. Latoya trended every Sunday night. And and people, some people was like, oh, she um was trying to, no, that is Latoya's real personality. She really acts like that in real life. <laughs> that's, that's just her, you know what I mean? And I, and I know some people don't like it, but I actually feel like on a show like this, you have to have those type of extreme personalities because right. you have some people who are just real laid back like myself or you're gonna have people that are really nice and sweet like a Cynthia but then right. you have your people like a Kenya that you know people will say is the villain or you know which is the, the Latoya you know right but I mean? so you're gonna have those extremes you know and it's just is what it is you can't ha everybody can't be the same it's not gonna work you gotta right. have different you know people for the show to be what it is yeah, I will say when I was watching Latoya, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with her. I know she's big on YouTube. I wasn't familiar with her, but I, I was just like, is she serious? Does she really act like this? But I realized she, that's really her personality. She really is. She came in really hot. Um, do you ever feel like she went too far in any situations or any scenes um, during the season? Oh, let me see. Oh, child. Um, they didn't. They they cut a lot out of that um, scene at Fallon's house. <laughs> she was going in on Fallon and her her relationship with her husband outside. Um, she was just going, just just really disrespectful. <laughs> it's just disrespectful. Obviously, you know, Fallon was out there trying to fight her. It was it was a lot. It was a lot. Okay. Um, who were you? I, I feel like I already know this, but we're, with the whole Drew versus Latoya, whose whose side did you kind of take more towards? I know you're friends with Latoya, so I'm assuming it's Latoya. Well, no. Um, in the beginning, I felt like Latoya was, you know, going a little too hard on Drew for no reason. But then it started flipping because I felt like Drew was like, Come on now, Drew. The whole thing with the profit. It was just like, now you tripping. Like, okay. This ain't even your business. Like, why do you care what this man is doing? And why do you care if, you know, it just was it was doing the most for me with the profit. Okay. So it it flipped um for me. It flipped. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Would you like to see more of Fallon? Or I definitely would like to see more of Fallon. I really like Fallon, and it's so funny. Um, I think people would like to see more Fallon, too, apparently, because all I can do is go by what I see on my Speak On It. So, you know, I had Fallon on Speak On It, and she had, like, the highest rated Speak On It up until recently when Latoya was on there. Like, people sat and watched more minutes of her Speak On It than pretty much any other housewife. And I was like, I don't know if it's because they – not didn't get to know a lot about her during the show and maybe they just wanted to know more about her or what but Fallon um she just seems just like a cool cool chick to me I don't know so I just I don't know I I liked her I, yeah. and then I mean I don't know it's a lot going on in her life obviously right now so I would make sure to know what is happening i mean i was like damn but like, everything going on with her everything's going on with toy i was like where are the cameras when you need them like <laughs> it's a lot happening um in both of their lives right now actually um so i don't know yeah well i don't i you know i'm i don't i didn't really, as a viewer i didn't get to see much of her so i was just curious right. to learn more about her see who she really is and i you know she's a girl too yeah, she's a she's pretty, you know, she's got this husband that's a little older than her. She has what three kids. It's just like it seemed like it's an interesting story. So I was I was kinda um same Taurus. <laughs> yeah, and so I guess were you familiar? Had you ever hung out with her and her husband or you had only just hung out with Fallon or No, I, I didn't really know them um 
practitioner. I mean, I guess I had seen her husband around, but I didn't know him. You know what I mean? Um, and I did not know her. So I had met them through, you know, the okay. show. Okay, gotcha. Um, so let's switch gears and talk about uh, like Housewives, the Real Housewives of Atlanta overall. I, this is you. You've been on this the show since the second season, right? Mm -hmm. Second second season. You've done twelve reunions. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're probably one of the last. Is it? Are you one of the last original? I mean, I guess been on the show the longest. Oh, no, because I wasn't here on season one. So. I know, but no one from season one is is on the show anymore. Okay, well, I'm the only person from season two. If that's what you. <laughs> What um I saw I saw recently that you said every year you think about leaving the show. Um mm -hmm. but what makes you come back every year? I don't know. You know, you just contemplate like, I don't know, when is your time? What do you what do you, you know what I'm saying? You just you just don't know. I don't know. It's not like it's not like a definite um answer you know what i mean it's like i enjoy being a part of the show but it is stressful at times it is a lot going on you know but i do love the fans i love um you know the support of the fans and whatever but you know it, it, i don't know it's it's not like I'm saying, you know, and I don't want people to get the feeling like I was saying I was leaving and nothing, but they asked me, does it ever cross my mind? And I'm like, yeah, it crosses my mind all the time. Right. Yeah. What's, um, what do you wish viewers saw more of from you, I guess? Hmm. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, of course, you know, you could see more of me with my family or, it's a lot of me and my my other friends outside right. of the show. A lot of my other friends outside the show got their own shows. <laughs> so we can't even be on each other's shows. So that's crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, probably that, you know, more with my family and, you know, the stuff that goes on You there? Yeah. Are you there, Sammy? Okay. Um, Hello? Yeah. Can you, you can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, what's uh, been this, what's been the biggest change you've seen on the show since it started? Biggest change on the show since it started? The cast? <laughs> I mean, outside the cast. That would be the biggest change, obviously. Okay. Um, that would be the biggest, uh, sh the way the, the show is probably produced. Um, I remember the first year I was on here they used to do on the fly interviews, meaning, you know, as soon as the scene would happen, we would be outside saying our opinion instead of just doing the interviews in the room. I don't mm -hmm. know if we even remember that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. Um, you know, the style of the women, <laughs> you know, everybody's all extra, uh, everybody all extra fancy now, everybody got all this extra money now. <laughs> they ain't, they weren't doing all that before, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I guess, you know, that would be, that would be it. And then I feel like um, people produce themselves more now. Meaning mm. they care more about their image now. Whereas in the beginning, when you first get on the show, you know, they don't really think about all that. So they're just living. They're just right. doing whatever, you know what I mean? But then as they realize, oh, I have a brand to uphold. Then it's like they're doing things for the sake of the fans or doing things because they know the fans will like this or they know that, oh, okay, this works with my brand. You get what I'm saying? Right. And, um, and it's things that you guys may not see or know, but we know it because behind the scenes, we know how it works. We know how the game is played. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I think stuff like that changes the way the outcome of what you end up 
the way the show turns out because if everybody's trying to you know protect their brand protect their image protect this then it's like you know nobody's ever gonna allow you to be able to see anything i mean even like um you know we even saw more relationships back in the day yeah, <laughs> now, yeah. it's like we only got to see one house husband on this reunion yeah before we had a whole crew we had Todd, Apollo, Peter. You know what I'm saying? I noticed that, but I thought maybe that was because of 